Welcome to Primal Fear, one of Ark's hardest mods. In this mod, I'll have 100 days to go ahead and work my way up the ranks of the various tiers of bosses and defeat them all in hopes that I can make it to Picon's Revenge within the 100 days. I'll have to defeat giant space black hole dispensing eels, terrifying dodo reapers that shoot plasma balls out of their bum and create giant plasma fields, as well as giant colossus beings that have elemental powers and can vomit up spit, fire, electricity, and ice only to make it to the end and face Picon's Revenge himself. Will I be able to defeat Picon's Revenge in this 100 days? It's time to find out. If you find yourselves enjoying the video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel, but let's get into it. Day one began with me creating my character. Now, I had some hella fine butt cheeks behind me, so I decided to name my character Cheeks. If my scary ass dinos weren't gonna scare them, my scary ass cheeks definitely were. I started the morning by finding a dark parrot. Now, I'd never seen this guy before, so I wanted to give it the good old walk up to it and see if it was friendly approach. Thankfully, it didn't want to try and murder me and it just flew off into the distance. I then went ahead and started knocking out my first dodo. This was going to be my first tame on Primal Fear and I needed to get some egg production going. Thankfully, it tamed up successfully and I also tamed up another one and got them breeding. I also learned some engrams and knocked out a dillo. Awesome, Enjoy it. Because you're not getting me. Why does this look so intimidating? Oh, that's intimidating. And this was where the fun was going to begin. Dying to raptors. These guys aren't even the primal fear raptors. They're just normal, good old, plain fashion raptors. And I'm already dying to them. So, oh no. you can imagine how well this mod is going to go. Thankfully, however, I was able to knock one of them out with a Primal Fear Spear. It did, however, come at a cost. These raptors are haunting me. I also killed the PT for some hide. I needed it to pair off some basic stuff. And I also tamed up another dodo right next to our raptor. These were the teams we had going, and it was a pretty successful day one. The next day, I headed out to tame a Death Knight. Wait, wait hold on a second. Professor Death Knight, did you change my script again? Oh, I would never. I would never do that. Well, oh, it's time what? for you to meet Professor no. Death Knight from today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Hey, Professor Death Knight, why don't you tell me about the new PvP Live Arena that's just come out? The new PvP mode, where you can fight against other players in real time. <gasps> Live Arena has a draft feature where you can pick and ban champions to fight for you. <laughs> Teamwork. When you win matches, you'll get live arena crests towards unlocking special area bonuses, or so I hear. I'm too afraid to try any of this out. So, Mr. Death Knight, sir, want to tell me your secret to winning? Well, everyone thinks I'll go in fighting, but nobody expects my charm. My best strength is the gift of gab. So when they try to attack, I'll just be like, nice weather we're having, eh? Nobody will see it coming. Smart thinking. No one expects a charming Death Knight. So, Death, my boy. Why don't you tell me how you feel about banning other champs? You know, your competition? I hate it. I wish everybody could play. Back in school, I would always get picked last. This is just like when someone pointed at me and said, you can't even play and your bones look weird. And if you're after something more challenging and don't want a PvP, you could try defeating the terrifying new boss, Akumori the Phantom Shogun. Raid have also made an incredible animated limited series, Raid Call of the Arbiter. You can check out all 10 episodes on the official Raid Shadow Legends YouTube channel right now as well. So, what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get an epic champion, the Knight Errant, as well as a bunch of other bonuses. Thank you very much to Raid for sponsoring this video. Day 2 began, I had successfully tamed up the Adillo. However, I had been sitting here for a little bit and in doing so, had actually got some loot from something. I'm assuming an Alpha Dodo because I wasn't really crazy OP. And then I went for a little bit of an exploration trip. Okay, not gonna go that way. That was an origin spino. So it looks like crystals off the menu for a little bit. I'm not dealing with that. There's a Daimoni Kainidon down there as well. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna go back to where we came. I think that's the smartest option. With my two mate boosted raptors, I figured it was time to head out and do a little bit of exploration. So I saddled them up and decided to make my way down the beach side of Viking Bay. Lo and behold, there was a lot more dangerous stuff down here. Will you please don't kill me? So far, so good. I think we're in the clear. I also grabbed some metal on the way. I had no idea where I was going though. And then I found myself in the swamp. Oh god, 
that thing hurt? Run. Oh, God. Apex Fjord Hawk. What is that doing there? <laughs> Day three began and I decided to spawn in at the Highlands. I was sick of Viking Bay and I wasn't having any, any luck. I spotted this Pegasus wandering around, however, and I figured I would try and tame it, but I couldn't. So that kind of sucked. I started gathering some metal to set up a basic forge and I found a Tech Raptor, but it was a Primal Tech Raptor, so it murdered me. I also knocked out a most chops in order to harvest it up for some hide as once again I was going to need hide in order to get some basic stuff going such as a refining forge and a mortar and pestle and then I settled on a base spot up here just a little bit down from where all the crops grow in the farmland area I figured this would be a great place as a lot of the kibble and latest stuff in the game required crops so Savile Root and Rock Carrot was here and it would be great. So I got to work at placing my foundation, my forge, more foundations, a bed, some walls so I could be protected, a preserving bin so I could get the jerky going and a mortar and pestle. I also found a unicorn and decided to try and tame that up. It was only a level 20 however, so it was gonna be a super, super weak unicorn. However, one unicorn was better than no unicorn. So I settled on the level 20 unicorn. Day 4 began by me getting some crystal. I needed some crystal in order to make an awesome spyglass. I then made my way to the beach and knocked out and killed my first toxic creature, a toxic dodo. Now yes, it was a weak ass toxic dodo, but I'll take what I can get, giving myself some toxic hide. Now I also went ahead and tried to knock out one of these Elder Mose chops, not knowing how much torpor it had. I also tamed up two dodos, a male and a female, so that I could begin my egg production. I also killed a Pteranodon in order to get some more hide, as these guys were the easiest thing I could kill. Made my spyglass up and I could see how much torpor the Elder Most Chops was had. And then my nemesis returned. Okay, this is just absolutely swell. I now have to deal with an Origin Raptor right outside my door. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, it's already his. Okay, this is going to go well. Oh, it can't actually break through stone. It's a 150. Never mind. This Alpha Raptor can. I'm legging it. I'm legging it. I'm going to die. Cool. We're off to a banger of a start. The next day, I returned onto the server, which you guys can also join. The link is in the Discord, so feel free to check it out. And I went ahead to try and tame myself up a new unicorn. A 140 fate would have it, and this one wanted to take me everywhere. Thankfully, I was able to tame it up down on the beach side, and then I also harvested up some Bacillosaurus blubber when I spotted my nemesis again. Not going that way. Nope. No, 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 no. Definitely not going that way. Field hawks are the bane of my existence at the moment. With my new and improved unicorn, I also managed to knock out one raptor and then two raptors. So I finally had something a little bit media to go around. I also made myself up a smithy and made myself some metal tools. Never mind. Not going to get crystal. There's a fuel hook. Day six came around and I knocked out another raptor. I gave it some meat as well as all of the other raptors that needed meat. Not my meat. That was just that's just wrong. So I gave them the meat to tame up, tamed up the raptors successfully, and I called them the butt because they were pains in the butt to tame. Also grabbed some more crystals so that I could go ahead and make the primal smithy, which I did, and then I placed the primal smithy down in my little shack. Spotted some Indominus Rexes off in the distance, and I shat my pants a little bit, and so did my unicorn. Now, I also went down to the beach to tame up two new dodos. So now is a good time to talk to you guys about how Primal Fear's tier system works. In order to get stronger dinos, you have to tame the previous tier. So basic dinos are the first tier, toxics are the second tier, alphas are the third tier, and so on and so forth. In order to do that, you need to make sure that you have the previous tier's eggs, which is why I'm taming up these dodos. Oh god, there's more of them. Why did I think the Highlands was going to be safe for? Oh, it's terrifying. All right, here we go. Finally, some organic polymer. So we can build some soul terminals and some other stuff. Just got to feed these two guys. I feel like they're going to be super strong too. They deal a lot of damage. I'm secretly hoping I can knock one of them out and then just get the hell out of here. Okay. Oh, shit. After taking a bunch of damage from the Mantis, I popped some healing stews to heal up my unicorn to prevent it from dying. I didn't want it dying. And then the Mantis caught up to us and it was a fight. 
to the death or unconsciousness, depending on if you're the mantis or not. Thankfully, I did get its torpor high enough and got it to run away from me, and I was able to knock it out and harvest it for its organic polymer. The next day I was able to make my soul terminal. This was going to be great for getting extra eggs from dinos as you could set them to produce eggs inside of the soul terminal, essentially allowing you to just stick some dinos in there and get as many eggs as you wanted. I also went ahead and knocked out a PT. This was going to be my first flyer and obviously I was struggling to get around the map at the moment due to everything killing me. So with our primal sphere spear, I went ahead and knocked it out successfully. I went ahead and also knocked out and killed another raptor down here on the beach. It was only level 20, so I didn't think it was worth taking back. Made some more narcotics. Spotted demonic overs in the Highlands. I don't know why I thought the Highlands would be safe for. There's been so much terrifying stuff out here. I also tamed up a parrot. No idea what they do, but I figured why the hell not. And then I spent the rest of the afternoon trying to run away from this primal raptor before it had the chance to kill me. Thankfully, with my smarts, I was able to out-navigate it up this cliff face and prevented it from murdering me. I managed to get my first few dodo eggs from the dodos I had tamed up and I was able to make my first toxic kibble. Now I could use this to go ahead and tame up some toxic dodos in order to get them to produce some toxic eggs. Successfully tamed up my first toxic dodo, luckily these guys only needed one kibble. And then I found another toxic dodo that was a female and successfully knocked her out as well. I was pretty happy about this, this would mean I would have a bunch of toxic eggs coming in soon enough. I then went ahead and also knocked out an alpha dodo. Don't, don't ask me why, it was just trying to attack me, so it just, it deserved, it deserved. I didn't have the means to make the kibble for it. Nonetheless, I took the dodos back to base, got them breeding, and I also got an egg from them as well. <laughs> the morning of day nine was spent harvesting up a bunch of resources. I started with metal, and then I went around getting some wood, some stone, as well as some thatch. I was planning on starting to build the base and I wanted to do it out of stone first before I committed to metal. I wanted to build it out of metal just to make sure I was safe from everything. I also placed down a water well, I have no idea why I don't need a water well for. And I also went ahead and started placing some crop plots as I was going to need some crops for all the future kibble that I needed to make. However, idiot me wasn't the smartest about this and I constantly tried to plant the crop seeds into it. And I was like, why is this not working? Why won't these crops take the seeds for? I thought it was because I built the basic non S plus crop plots. So I took all my poo out, built a converter and put the crop plots into that to convert them into S plus. And lo and behold, they still didn't want to work. I had no idea what was going on. I genuinely thought the game was broken and it was being bugged. And then I had a realization. It doesn't go into small crop plots. It doesn't work like that. So I built a medium crop plot and that fixed my issues. But for a seasoned arc person to have made that mistake for so long and not realize, like I literally tabbed out and everything to try and find a solution. And it was just the wrong crop plot size. Day 10 came around and I decided to wander around and try and find a decent toxic tame that I could use. I had made up some kibble the day before and I had found this level 15 toxic parasaur. It only needed one kibble and I knocked it out with my unicorn. Successfully tamed it up and I had no idea what I was going to do with this guy to be completely honest. I also went ahead and tamed up some more toxic dodo so that I could get egg production increased and get more toxic eggs in the process. I also laid down some compost bins so that I could go ahead and get some compost for our crop plots. The next day I found a toxic raptor to try and tame up and well that went great for me. Okay. Yep, didn't see that coming. That's for sure. I didn't realize they had a pounce ability. Cool. Ah, uh, hopefully our equus doesn't die. I couldn't really care much about the parrot. I'm pretty sure my unicorn's on passive. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's get back out there. Hopefully we can save it. It is taking a bunch of damage. Beat it up, horny. Oh god, this is gonna be close. No, we were so close. <sighs> well, there goes horny again. Horny two, now we need to find horny three. I returned to try and get my revenge on the raptor and knock it out, as I did need a stronger toxic tame. However, fate had other ideas in mind. 
<laughs> oh man, that sucks. I did thankfully find another one. This one was slightly stronger as well. So it did have more torpor, but with my pike, I was able to knock it out successfully and tang it up. And I also gave it a fitting name of Barney. As, well, you can obviously see from its color, it very much looks like Barney the Dinosaur. I wanted to take it for a test run, but I didn't have the means to make it saddle, so I sent it after a Raptor on its own, and it was hitting for 104 damage. Pretty decent considering it was our next tank. I then went ahead and used it to take out an Alpha Dodo, which, well, I mean, that went pretty well. I managed to kill it without any losses, and I also went and killed some more Raptors after making a saddle for it. Took on some more Alpha Dodos and some other Raptors as well. Now, because it was a Toxic Raptor, it did also have the ability to deal Torpor damage, which was great. And then I tried to bowler an Alpha Pteranodon to knock out, but that didn't work out very well for me because the Alpha PTs aren't bowlerable. I then headed into the Redwoods to try and find something stronger to tame. And I successfully found a level 55 Alpha Basilisk. However, I was able to knock it out and it did need a little bit of Alpha Kibble. I just, for some reason, could not put that Alpha Kibble into it. It buried underground after getting attacked by a beaver and I could nope. not interact with it whatsoever. It wasn't on my taming bar, so I had no idea what was going on with it. So I abandoned that goal and decided to kill a bunch of Alpha Castoroiduses instead, getting some Alpha Hide and Alpha Blood. However, a Terror Bird decided to attack me while I was leveling up, and things descended into chaos rather quickly from this point. Just gonna pretend that doesn't exist, and waltz on. Bye. Never mind. I made up my first Alpha Kibble and then headed out to try and find an Alpha PT. Instead, I found an Apex Basilisk. I then went ahead and just knocked out a basic Pteranodon. The next morning was spent harvesting up a bunch of stone from these stone piles located around the farm. I also wanted to clear them so that I could have some more space to build the base, as these were kind of just dotted everywhere around it. I also spent some time gathering by hand a bunch of berries because I needed narco berry seeds and tinto berry seeds in order to make the next tier of narcotics. I did, however, manage to get a couple of potent narcotics and with those I could then make my upgraded pike, which dealt the tour 4 damage. I headed back out to the Redwoods, found a Toxic Ravager at level 95, bowled it, and got to work at knocking it out with my upgraded pike. Oh, let's go. All right. I then continued flying through the Redwoods when- Oh no. Oh. I think I just knocked my own freaking Pteranodon out instead. Oh my God, the Thyla came out of nowhere. I didn't even see it. It was only level 15. Oh, when will this end? The next day, I tamed up my Toxic Ravager. And then he died. And then I died. And then I died again. And then I returned to my Dodo and my Dillo. Just so they could die. And then I died again. And again. And then I found a Strichosaurus near my base, so I built a trap in order to get it in there. I needed a herbivore to gather some berries. Thankfully, it went in there without me dying, which was the first time for anything. I successfully tamed up the Stricker and I was able to harvest some berries now. The next day I tried taking the other Strichosaurus that was up here and getting that into the trap to knock out as well. They were a pair so I could breed them for future eggs. While that was knocked out, I then found this standing stone structure which I'd never seen before and pondered life's questions. Then the Strichosaurus was tamed up so I grabbed that and the female and I got them breeding so that I could get an egg. Never know when these guys were going to die, so I wanted to make sure I had a backup available. I then got to work at harvesting a bunch of berries. Now, like I said earlier, I did need narco berry seeds and tinto berry seeds in order to make the next tier of narcotics. And with that, I had managed to get a bunch of seeds, which was great. I then spotted two alpha dodos on the beach, a male and a female, and I needed these guys in my life so that I could get all of the alpha eggs I would possibly need. So I headed back to base. Made some alpha kibble up, they only needed one each, which means I only needed two kibble, which was perfect. And I also bowled this alpha equus that Are I found sure while that? running around. However, I can't believe I missed that bowler shot point blank range. Tamed up the alpha equus, and then I also tamed up the two alpha dodos as well. Got them back to base and in the soul terminal. I put my meat into the preserving bin with some, no, not that kind of meat, to make some jerky, thank you very much. I then used the Alpha Equus to go ahead and get some more berries, as this was going to be much better than our Strigosaurus's, and we could get a bunch of seeds like this using the Alpha Equus. Look at all those beautiful seeds. Mmm, yummy. I also got some wood and stone, because the Alpha Equus does have boosted stats. It's about five times better than the standard Tames. They have boosted weight. So our Alpha Equus, even though it was a low level, could hold quite a lot. 
I then also got started on assembling the foundations of my base. I was trying to go for a Nordic sort of longhouse that I was trying to build. It kind of worked out, but I only laid the foundations. Also made myself some basic armor, and then I went ahead and took the Equus out for a bit of a test run when I spotted a ramshackle wandering loot boss. Don't like that guy being here. We're gonna have to try and avoid him because I'm pretty sure he makes everything in the area aggro on you. So we gotta stay well away from him. We are definitely not ready to deal with him. Although, judging by that sound, it doesn't sound like we've got much of a choice. Tell me he's not after me. <gasps> he's definitely after me. I really hope he's not close to our base. Pretty sure his rockets demolish everything. Oh, he's right over there. Oh, I think our base is gonna go bye-bye. There is no way that this bastard has survived for so long out here by himself at level 65 with all of these monstrosities around him. You're telling me this guy has survived out here all this time. Get stuffed. <laughs> I wish I had this Pteranodon's luck. So after finding that Pteranodon untouched in the redwoods, I then proceeded to stop by the ice biome in a little pond to try and tame my water. I figured it would help with the hypothermia. And then that Pteranodon died. I, it's me, I'm the bad luck. I managed to tame up the otter, however, so that there was a positive out of that, I, I, I guess. On the way back to base as well, I was attacked by a primal tech Quetzal. This thing would one-shot me, so I needed to outfly it. However, this bastard was fast. Thankfully, I was able to see spin out of his attacks and he did aggro onto something else. I then went ahead and used my Alpha Equus to try and kill an Apex Dillo. Now, this was going pretty good. The Dillo wasn't really able to get too many shots in. When it did, it hit freaking hard, however. But in the end, I was able to kill it. I then went ahead and knocked out my first Alpha PT, only level 45. And then I decided to tussle with an Alpha Enforcer, leaving me with 103 health. After healing up, an old nemesis returned to face me. So I'm just going to jump in the water and pray that he doesn't come after us. Yo, oh, fuck, that's so annoying. How the hell? Am I supposed to get away from this guy? Oh, we somehow lost him. I have no idea how. I am not complaining. That is for sure. Holy smackadoodles. The next morning, I found a 150 Alpha Pteranodon and successfully managed to deal quite a lot of torpor damage to it. However, it decided to fly over where the ramshackle wandering loot boss was. So I kind of had to disengage and forget about it for the time being. I did, however, return to my level 45 Pteranodon that I knocked out and successfully tamed that up in the process. However, on returning to try and find the 150 PT, everything in the area aggroed on me, including this ice parrot and the ramshackle wandering loot boss himself. So me and my Equus had to swim away to get away from these two bloody murderers in hopes that I could survive another day. <gasps> oh no, I hit it! Oh! oh, buddy, I'm so sorry. I love this dude. I did manage to tame up the Alpha PT. However, the Ice Parrot was still in the area, so I had to get it to follow me from a safe distance. And then I was able to cryo it up and get it back to base. I did manage to find another Alpha PT and I was able to shoot it with an arrow and pike it till it was knocked out. Due to the fact that Crimson Streak was now gone, I had to do things the old fashioned way, but I tamed it up and got them back to base and I was able to breed them successfully together. I then went ahead and found an Alpha Raptor. It was only level 60. I wanted to knock it out so that I could kill it in order to get some hide for a PT saddle. And then it pounced on me and apparently it can still use its pounce ability while it's bold. So that's always fun. Thankfully, I was able to get out of it due to my armor saving me, and I was able to knock it out, kill it for its hide. 23 hide short. My god, that's annoying. Looks like you're gonna be dying, little one. What the fuck? Oh, this guy's gonna be so hard to kill. I don't know if I can do it. He's literally like, exactly like the dad. I'm gonna have to keep him. I finally managed to get some more alpha hide in order to make the saddle and I had just the right amount. I then decided to take our strongest one for a bit of a test run. Now its basic attacks hit for 277 but its C-spin hit for 1100 damage. Now this guy also hadn't been leveled up just yet so I was pretty happy about that. I then went ahead and knocked out a normal 145 Dodicarus. I regret this decision greatly. And then I made my way down to the desert, found a 140 Alpha Iguanodon, bowled it, and knocked that out as well. 
I then also found an Alpha Anki in the area. Only level 85, but I would take it. Now, thankfully, it just didn't want to attack me at a certain range, so I got to work at knocking it out. However, there was a Rock Drake nearby that had other things to say about the matter, an Apex one at that as well. So unfortunately, I didn't finish knocking the Anki out. It was literally like one more strike till it got knocked out. But I returned, knocked it out, and then legged it back to my PT in order to get back to base to make up the Alpha Kibble. Made the Alpha Kibble, tamed up the Alpha Iguanodon first, and decided to call him Strider. I feel like that was a fitting name, and he would replace Crimson Streak. The next morning, I returned back to the first Dodicarus that I had knocked out to give it some crops. Now, this is where things started to go very bad. There was a Primal Carno nearby, and, well, it one-shot my PT and then one-shot me. No, don't take him in circles. Tell me that Corrupted Reaper King isn't after me. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, man. Oh, there's the other one up there. Must have something must have got its attention. Give me that. Give me that. Oh man, I wish I could come back for all of this. So after getting most of my gear back to base, I then went ahead and took Strider out on a berry run to get a bunch of seeds as well as rare flowers as they were going to be required for the next tier of narcotics alongside rare mushrooms. And then I did some metal farming. Oh god. Literally, right now, are you kidding me after all this time? <laughs> well, that's annoying. So after watching the Alpha Anki died, I then took Strider out to the swamp biome to get some more rare mushrooms because I wanted to do a massive farm of them so that I had the ability to make narcotics. I then found another Alpha Anki at level 90 and I thought it would be smart of me to stand there and smack him with my pike, not expecting any repercussions. Thankfully I was able to get back to him rather quickly as we were near a spawn point, but I did the same thing again and died again. Thankfully this time I used some arrows and got him high on torpor and then knocked him out. I took my PT with Strider back to the swamp near the castle and grabbed some rare flowers from the plants near here as well. I then returned to the Alpha Anki the next day to give it some Alpha Kibble, tamed it up and called him Spike. I then decided to take on my first fabled creature, a fabled Strigosaurus, and boy oh boy I got a lot of loot from that. And from that point on I decided I was going to need to kill a lot more fabled creatures. I chucked the rare flowers, the rare mushrooms and the eggplant seeds into the preserving bin and mined up a bunch of metal with our new Anki. With that I then went ahead and tried to tame up a, an Alpha Gacha. Ah, but idiot me decided not to split the stacks of Alpha Kibble and throw a stack of three Alpha Kibble straight into the Gacha's mouth and well I don't think you're supposed to do that. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to feed it individually. So I gave up on that prospect of taming an alpha gacha. So guys, I've just been out here in the redwoods killing a bunch of fabled creatures. I just finished killing a Castoroidus and a fabled featherlight and got some killer blueprints. Also received an ascendant shotgun, a mastcraft long neck rifle, which is perfect for our dart situation. So we can go ahead and start using that to tame up elementals. There we go. Another fabled creature down. After hunting down some fabled creatures, I then went ahead and tried to tame up an Alpha Costeroidus. But I love it when my darts get to hit. So thankfully after a few Trank arrows and a couple of pikes to uh, the face, this Alpha Costeroidus finally went down and I could chuck some kibble in it in order to tame it up. I then went back to base and started placing down some metal foundations for my main base as I was going to need to get this up and running ASAP because I was running out of space in my little tiny shack. I spent some time mining in order to get a bunch of metal so that I could make an industrial forge and headed back out to tame our Castoroidus. However, an Alupex defense unit was guarding it and I was unable to tame it because it died. The next day, I headed back out to the desert, found a spirit manticore. That's a lot of damage. And got absolutely obliterated by it. Well, that looks uncomfortable. So after that harrowing experience, I returned back out to the desert in order to tame up an Alpha Dodicarus. Thankfully I found this 141 and it fell pretty easily to my tranks and my darts due to them being slow. I also found an electric Archaeopteryx and tried to build a trap in order to trap it. However, the trap obviously didn't work as intended, but it did stop it from getting to us and I was able to knock out my first elemental creature. This was the next tier after Alpha. 
Tamed up the electric Archaeopteryx, and because it was a female, it would produce eggs for us. I did also try knocking out this ice feather light, even though my arrows were hidden, but not hitting because you love that game called Ark, and tried to bring it into the trap. Now, this one actually went a lot smoother. However, I made the trap too big, and well, it kind of just phased through the doors. So I retreated back to base, fed my Archaeopteryx some healing stew, and it pooped out a bunch of eggs. Had no idea this would be the case, but I'll take the eggs that I can get. I then went back out to the Redwoods in order to tame up an Alpha Castoroidus. With this guy getting tamed up, that would mean that I have all my resource gathering creatures that I could possibly need. Now, the Alpha Dodicarus also tamed up and I was set. I returned back to the desert to try and find a male electric Archaeopteryx. Thankfully, I did find one. However, getting it knocked out proved to be a bloody mission. It kept flying away from me. It was super fast. And I also managed to knock out that Ice Feather Light as well and tame it from the day before. As for the electric Archaeopteryx, I returned to him and knocked him out and tamed him up. I got back to base and started working on putting everything else down as well. The next day I headed down the beach to discover what was down there when I got attacked by an ice parrot. Now I flew into the water thinking I could lose it down there, but instead of that I just ended up losing my Archaeopteryx and my life. Thankfully I had bred them before taking it out and I did manage to hatch the egg and thankfully it was a female. Oh thank god it's a female. We can make it with daddy. Huh? I then worked on the base a little bit more. Now, with the new Alpha Tames tamed up, I then went and did a resource run with both of them, gathering a bunch of wood and a bunch of stone with each of them, respectively. I transferred the resources into my base and then went ahead and grabbed a bunch of cementing paste from some beaver dams and destroyed their dams so that you guys don't chastise me for not dropping everything out of them. The next day, I managed to find myself a level 20 Apex Raptor, only needing one Apex Kibble in order to tame. So, I mounted my electric Archaeopteryx, pumped the bullet straight in its snout and knocked it out. It only needed one kibble, it was easy enough to come by, so I managed to get that tamed up and then I found a female Apex Raptor over here as well. This was perfect because it meant that we would get an abundance of eggs in the Soul Terminal, which means we can move on to the next stage of kibble once these guys started producing it. All I had to do was knock this Raptor out and tame it in the process as well. Thankfully, it wasn't too much of a challenge and I also killed this fabled Strikosaurus with my electric Archaeopteryx, getting a massive, massive item. That is gonna help us knock out creatures exponentially due to its damage. Apex Raptor, tamed up. I finally managed to finish my base with the chem bench and a second floor. Well, I mean, I managed to finish the first floor. Second floor, not so much. I then made my way back out to the desert where I lost my electric Archaeopteryx to an alpha defense unit and my life. Well, that could have gone better. I didn't realize my- Thankfully, I was able to knock out and tame another fire mega raptor. However, I didn't make it on top of it in time because the dark Archaeopteryx decided to end my life prematurely again. Managed to grab my stuff back as well as the fire mega raptor. Thankfully, it wasn't dead. However, I died once again. This is a running thing. Now, with the Fire Mega Raptor Tame, I could dish out a lot of damage over time. So that's exactly what I did by taking it up against a dragon boss. And you can see the inflamed effect was able to cook this dragon and kill him eventually. I then took him for a bit of a speed run. As it's a Mega Raptor, Micro Raptors actually have the fastest base I'm movement fast speed fuck, in the boy. game. So uh, you can imagine how fast these guys are when they run. I then decided to also take out the Titanosaur because why the hell not? It was near my base and I just wanted to murder it a little bit. I was hoping to get some XP from it, but my fire killed it, so I don't think I got any. The next day was more boss killing. I took out a Dodo Wyvern with my fire breath attack and the flaming burning damage over time. Now you can imagine that I was able to take out bosses successfully, so I would be killing them every time I spotted them with the chances I could get. Got him. I then found my first Celestial Ferox. This guy lobbed bombs that split up like a cluster mortar. It was absolutely insane. I was just gonna fly under here for safety. I then also knocked out a fabled Argy. I didn't exactly have the kibble on hand at the moment, but I was pretty close to getting it. And then I decided to be an idiot and try using my fire attack on an origin Argy. These are the technically the second tiers of bosses. So uh, you can imagine what happened to me after I tried to melt it with my flame breath. It one shot my fire mega raptor. Thankfully, I was able to get away on foot only to die to it later in the pond. 
Day 36 came around and I teamed up another Fire Mega Raptor so I could now breed my two Mega Raptors together. I managed to grab my body bag back as well as my Mega Raptors body back. And then I also teamed up a Light Feather Light at 145. Now these guys are the next tier up of the Elementals. These are advanced Elemental creatures. So they come in light and dark form. So hopefully this guy was going to be strong. Spoilers, it was a, a very strong team to have. We absolutely nuked most things that we fought. As well as that, it also dealt damage over time. I then went and knocked out two Omega Rexes, both females. One was a level 95 and one was a lower level. These guys were going to be needed for the kibble as well. So I needed to get some egg production online and up and running. I then returned to the Fabled Argy that I had knocked out and tamed that up. And I also tamed up the first Amiga Rex. Now, this was the lower level one that only needed two Hello Amiga there. Kibble. And when I got out to the other one, there was actually a male off in the distance, which would be amazing for our egg production. So I got that male Amiga Rex knocked out and used the Kibble to tame that up instead of the other female. The following day, I found some Indominus Rexes and managed to get the female low enough for her to drop an egg. So I'd received my first Indominus Rex egg. I then found some Omega Indominus Rexes on the way back to base. Whew, I was really excited for these guys. I was like, let's go ahead. I'm going to get myself one of those Omega eggs. We're going to have an Omega Rex and we're just going to absolutely dominate everything across the arc. But I killed the female and she didn't drop an egg. So I think I actually had to use Amiga Kibble to tame these guys up, and yeah, well, I didn't do that. So made my way back to base, bred the Amiga Rexes, hatched the Indom egg, and I had myself a baby Indominus Rex. The next day, I also found another pair of Indominus Rexes. This time, however, they're Apex ones. Wait, what? Did she just drop the egg? Uh... Um... Don't mind if I do. After obtaining the egg, I make my way back to base, killing everything on my way, when a primal tech raptor manages to grab me off my featherlight and murder me. Thankfully, I'm able to get back to my body and get the rest of my goods back to base and hatch the Apex Indominus Rex egg. Now I've got two Indominus Rexes raising up outside of the base, each of them requiring their corresponding kibble so that they don't starve to death. So I had to keep a close eye on these guys to make sure that they didn't die, which gave me enough time to finish the second floor of my base. And this is what I was left with. Now, I wasn't exactly happy with the roof. It was a pain in the ass to put on there, but it looked okay. I then spent the next few days just babysitting these guys and sprucing up the base a bit with some of Eco's mods. And I think the front of the base looked really nice now. It looked a lot better than what it did before. I also made a little alcove here for mushrooms. While still waiting for the Indoms to raise, I figured I'd tame up some dumb beetles to really up my crop production. So I tamed up three of these little cute bastards, named my featherlight Glisten, and also tamed up some Fabled Pteranodons. These guys were going to be our egg producers for the Fabled eggs, as they were very easy to tame and only required one kibble to tame up. There was also an abundance of them. When I found the Celestial Indominus Rex Emperor, it was a little scary, not going to lie. I figured I'd take my Indominus Rexes out now that they were raised for a little bit of a test run, and I took it up against this Apex Broodmother. Now, this Apex Broodmother, she wasn't really all that scary, to be completely honest. We had a lot of health on our Indominuses, and they obviously hit very hard, being the hardest hitting creatures that we could use at this moment. Now, this was the Apex Indominus Rex as well. So this one is slightly stronger than the Alpha, and I just wanted to also test out its ability. So it had two different roars and a bite attack. Now, one of those roars also summoned Raptors, which you can see around here. Uh, they didn't really do too much damage, but the Indominus Rex itself did a whole heap. So I fought another Brood Mother, and then I had the smart genius decision to try and fight some demons and dragons. Yep, didn't work in my favor. <laughs> Bro, do you want to stop roaring for like a second and actually fight this guy? I might be in trouble here. Well, that was a very short-lived Indominus Rex. The next day, I decided to take my Alpha Indominus Rex out and try and fight a primal creature. Now, these guys technically are the first tier of bosses, and this guy took me literally half the day to kill. But I was able to successfully kill it, and I needed its primal blood and its hide in order to get to the next tier of boss summoners, which were the origin creatures. I also needed its potions that it dropped because they would heal us up to full health. 
I then killed a primal Allosaurus as well, and literally these two primal creatures took me the entire day to kill with my Alpha Ring. I spent another half a day killing a primal Kentro for its blood, and then I went and tamed up the fabled PT that I had knocked out. So that was two female PTs that I had tamed up, and I also knocked out and tamed up two Apex Rexes of a breeding pair. I don't know why I tamed these guys up for, to be honest. I think I was just going to use them to try and fight the primals, but I don't think I ever used them for anything, to be honest. Now that I had fabled eggs and omega eggs, I could finally tame my first celestial or demonic by taming celestial ferox. Oh my god! Oh, come on. Now, thankfully, this time I was a little bit smarter about it and set up a sleeping bag with a bunch of elemental creatures in it so that I could fly to my body if I needed to, which obviously came in handy. After successfully knocking it out, I needed to go back to base in order to make the kibble. However, this thing, Moni Kyenodon, had other plans for it and decided to absolutely melt the poor celestial ferox that I had just spent the entire day trying to knock out. Nice. In order to enact revenge, I decided to team up the Hyenodon that killed the Ferox. Successfully knocking it out, it was only level 85, but I did make the demonic kibble for it, returned, and tamed it up. I also gave it a name, Cerberus. Obviously, it's not a three-headed dog, but it was close enough. I then decided to take it head-to-head -head against a demonic thorny dragon, just to see how much damage we could do. When lo and behold, the demonic thorny dragon was absolutely kicking my ass. I needed to get out of there, otherwise it was going to absolutely melt me. You can see the amount of damage that I was taking from fighting this thorny dragon. It had absolutely obliterated my health, while it still had about half of its left. So I obviously had to pop a potion on Cerberus, otherwise he was going to die. And this was also a weak thorny dragon. It was only level 35, and I was getting my ass absolutely handed to me. So I thought to myself, I'm going to need one of these. I then went and took out a Celestial Griffin, however, and this thing was just as bad as the bloody Thorny Dragon, leaving a whole layer of cocooning stuff on the floor for me to walk through and deal damage over time, but thankfully I was able to nuke that a lot easier than the Thorny Dragon. I then took it up against a Primal Kano, and this literally took me longer than the Indominus Rex to kill it, to be honest. It was so long to kill this damn thing. The next day, I returned back out to the desert to find a female demonic hyenodon, as you can breed these guys. I managed to get her knocked out and tamed up. She was a lot stronger than the male one that we had tamed up, but she was also deserving of a name, so I called her Cerberi. Now, with these two demonic hyenodons, I then went ahead and tackled Artifacto the Great. Now, Artifacto, when you kill him, drops artifacts which is great for the bosses as pretty much all the summoners require one artifact in order to use them. Eventually killing Artifacto, I got a couple of artifacts and then I went for round two against a demonic thorny dragon. Two against one, surely this will be better, right? Yeah, you'd be slightly correct, I guess. I was still taking a lot of damage from its tail spike attack, however. Day 50, the halfway point of our adventure and I spent it trying to tame up a demonic thorny dragon. A 150 nonetheless, and I successfully tamed it up. Now, it was finally time to see if we could hit for just as hard as the wild ones do. And lo and behold, we absolutely clapped cheeks with our spike attack. We did a lot of damage. Obviously, more damage than we did with the wild ones, because I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. And we went ahead and decided to use it up against a primal. This Primal Kentro got absolutely nuked with this flame attack. It was great. Finally, we were getting somewhere. Now that we had a powerhouse team, it was finally time to start dealing some damage to things. Starting off with this Forest Titan. Now, these guys have 400,000 health. Obviously, they don't have as much as the Primals, but it was still a, an achievement to absolutely kill this guy. You can see he's losing his arms and everything in the process. And this would actually give us our first tech grams, which is exactly what I needed. After killing the Forest Titan, I then went ahead and decided to kill some more Primals, starting with this Primal Kano. Now, while I was in this area, so, there was an Origin Spine, ooh, I so figured, why the hell not? Doing some damage to it. 40k is all it's hitting us for. We have potions in our inventory. My Spine Burn effect is just absolutely nuking it by the looks of things. I am definitely not complaining about that. Look at that, get absolutely shredded. Demonic Thorny Dragon is definitely the way to go. Holy smokes. I remember back in the day, it used to be Demonic Parasaurs. 
I'm not entirely sure if they're uh, still as crazy strong as they were back then. Bro, that's cheating. I can't hit you in the water. Get out of there. First origin going down. Let's do it. Oh my god, look at its health get absolutely shredded. And just like that, we have defeated our first origin boss. The origin Spino has been defeated and we are finally getting access to tech engrams. Hallelujah, how I have longed for you. I then also went ahead and killed an origin raptor that was spawned up here on the cliffs. Now that I had the capacity to kill the origins and primals, I'll probably stop showing most of the kills on screen, except for the big fights that I did with them. I spent the next morning going on a boss killing spree, starting off with an origin raptor that I had found wandering around, and then I went into a primal Kentrosaurus. Once again, needing these guys for everything, I then took the thorny dragon out to get some rare mushrooms and some wood, and went on a resource gathering quest with my Anki Spike in order to get some crystal. I then also went ahead and started breeding up my demonic hyenodons to try and get some offspring going. Now with my thorny dragon, I went out to the desert once again, and I decided to fight the desert titan. Look at this big dumbass just floating here like a bloody useless sack of potatoes, except sack of potatoes don't float. He kind of just did nothing and accepted his death. It was great. I loved it. It was so smooth. I then went ahead and started trying to take down some demonics as well as another origin RG because why the hell not? I had access to it. I knew I could take them. And then I went face to face with an apex megapithecus. Once again, absolutely nuking these guys thanks to the demonic form dragon attacks. Then it was time to fight the ice titan. Why not? He was spawned in and he was killed really easily. I kind of wanted to get all the trophies so that I could display them around the base, uh, but unfortunately this Ice Titan didn't actually drop his trophy when I murdered him. Once again, I was taking out more bosses, another Origin RG was defeated, and I also tamed up a female demonic thorny dragon who I called Heldari. I also got my first demonic Hyenodon offspring. The next day, I finally had enough resources to make the Tech Replicator. So I built an extension on the base, chucked down the Tech Replicator, and then went ahead and killed a bunch of Origins that I hadn't killed yet. I killed these guys by making the Summoners in the base, and that unlocked most of the Tech Grants for me. I then built the Tech Transmitter in order to track down dinosaurs. However, I didn't realize that I need more than one to do a dino scan. I then went ahead and also killed a Primal Broodmother boss. Now that I had killed a bunch of origins, I was able to make their origin trank arrow, which essentially is a one-shot full trank thing. So you fire this into the tame, their torpor goes full, and they also get extra attack damage and movement speed. So I used my first one on this Celestial Spino, which I tamed up, and then I went ahead and knocked out this fabled Anki before Primal Kano decided to come along and eat it on me. Thank you very much for that, Primal Kano. Got back to base and tested out the brand new Celestial Spino and its attacks, and this thing was terrifying. Although I feel like it wasn't as powerful as the Celestial Ferox, it still definitely packed a punch with its attacks. I then also incubated some of the demonic thorny dragon eggs that I had so I could get some offspring. Now on my transmitter, I'd spotted another demonic thorny dragon. So I made my way back out to the desert to try and knock this guy out. I took an origin arrow with me, plonked it straight into the demonic thorny dragon, flew away and tamed it up. Now this guy did have stronger melee damage than my male, so I had to incorporate it into the lines. It was then time for the next tier of bosses, the Celestial Indominus Rex Emperor. Now my plan was simple, I had leveled up these demonic thorny dragons in the front purely in HP, I had pumped them with a primal health potion so they would get health regen for the next 60 seconds, yeah they would tank and I would go ahead and use the DPS and try to kill the Celestial Indominus Rex Emperor while they tanked the damage. In theory, it sounded great. In action, yeah, it kind of worked. You can see he were dealing de damage to the Indom. However, it wasn't as much as I was expecting, to be honest. However, the Demonic Thorny Dragons definitely could have used their Tail Spike attacks, but they just didn't. And unfortunately, they both went down. So it was then a game of cat and mouse trying to dodge the Celestial Indom's power-up blocker but I was finally able to defeat it with minimal casualties, only losing those two demonic thorny dragons at the beginning of the fight. Oh, oh, oh my God, my heart stopped. I thought she was gonna kill us because we got the power up blocked. Oh, and she's dead, let's go. Now with the tameable spawner that she drops, I went ahead and tamed up a version of her as well. And she was terrifying to use. Look at that damage. 
The spine attack is just awesome. Day 64 saw me raising some more thorny dragons, as well as taking on some more origins, starting with the Karuka origin, the Wyvern origin, the Rex origin, as well as getting ready to face these demonic Reaper Emperors. I also went ahead and tamed up a 175 <coughs> Celestial Rock Drake. Now I couldn't make the saddle for this guy as I needed red gems and had no way of getting them. Day 66 was spent harvesting up a bunch of resources. I needed a butt ton of crystal and a butt ton of metal, so that's exactly what I did with my Alpha Anki and Fabled Argy. The following morning was spent knocking out and taming a manticore. Now, the bosses produce eggs which you can use to tame higher tier of bosses such as alpha apexes and spirits. So, I wanted to get a start on that. I did leave it a bit later than I would have liked to, however, it should be fine. I then went ahead and also built the primal industrial forge and tamed up another manticore. Day 69 and you know what time it is? Breeding time. So, I bred my manticores and got twin manticore babies. Obviously, that's a sign. Perfect timing of the days. Now, day 70 came around and it was time to fight the demonic Reaper Empress. Now, this is the counterpart to the Celestial Indominus and unfortunately, Glisten was the first victim to fall to the Reaper Empress, getting absolutely nuked by her attack. Now, the Reaper Empress also kept digging underground, which was super annoying. We had to constantly be in range of her in order to fight her. Uh, so I did lose quite a few of my demonic thorny dragons fighting her, as well as the celestial indom that I had tamed up earlier. But thankfully, with my spikes, I was able to defeat her in the end, even though she came very close to killing me as well at the same time in the process. It was a uh, it was a very big ordeal. So I went ahead and spawned in her spawnable summoner thing that you can use. Popped an origin arrow with my demonic hyena don. Tried to get the hell out of there, but ended up not escaping in time, and I got cooked in the process of trying to tame her. Now, of course, she doesn't decide to dig underground, but when I'm fighting her, she does. Nonetheless, though, I still managed to tame her up with some demonic kibble, and she was very terrifying. These things are absolutely horrifying to use. Like, they're so loud, their abilities are so crazy, and we also got really good armor saddles from killing the boss version of her, so she was super tanky as well. It was then time to get a female for my male Celestial Spino. So I found this guy on, well this lady I should say, on the Dino Transmitter. I tamed her up and got her back to base. Now I could breed my Celestial Spinos together. I then also found a wild Celestial Rex Emperor. Just, you know, chilling in the wild as they do. I did, this was the second one. And unfortunately, my Fire Mega Raptor did also die in the process, but I was able to kill the Celestial Indominus. It was then time to take on the Spirit Guardian. In my opinion, one of the hardest bosses in all of Primal Fear, as they have the ability to fly and fire massive spirit orbs. So you're probably wondering, CJ, how did you defeat this thing? Well, I built a very rudimentary trap for it. You can see here it was lined with behemoth gates, some walls up the side, and this enabled me to sort of trap it in between the two behemoth gate frames and absolutely pepper the crap out of it with my demonic thorny dragon. However, it was able to fly out of it occasionally, which definitely sucked. Thankfully though, I did have my fabled PT on me, which was leveled exclusively in movement speed. And so I just kept having to kite it back into the trap like this. However, it did get my fabled Tyranodon in the process. Let's fucking go! <laughs> oh my god, that took so long and that was my heart, my head, oh my god, it was all gonna bloody burst. Oh, that was the most tedious boss and the biggest pain in the ass, but we got there in the end with one casualty. I think we lost our fabled PT. Oh man, I'm so glad that's dead. I am so glad that that is dead. Spirit Orb, finally. Now we can tame some spirit dinos, let's go. The next day I tamed up an alpha manticore with the basic boss eggs that I had and I also went ahead and tamed up my first spirit dino. A spirit thylacolio who I named Translucent. It was then time to take Translucent for a test run on some Origin Kairukus. And well, you can see the amount of damage that Translucent was dishing out. I didn't stop at Translucent, however. Bruh! That hit, what do you mean? I didn't bring spares. Okay, we hit it. Get the hell out of here. I think I hit it. Ah! 
running. I'm just running. I'm just running. Hide in a rock. Hide in a rock. Hide somewhere. Oh, God. Oh, thank God. We got it tamed up. Can I ride it? Oh, let's go. We can ride it. Oh, all right. That spino is right on my ass. Holy smackadoodles. Is that close? There is a chaos one right there, too. Let's just bag RB. Okay. Oh, I can breathe now. So taming that was definitely an ordeal, but I decided to go ahead and test out its damage capabilities on this primal spino below us. And uh, well, it definitely did a lot of damage. Plus it had the added bonus of being a flyer, so things hitting it were very unlikely. You can see here this poor superior broodmother just got absolutely nuked into next week. It was great. Now, unfortunately, I did find an origin Kairuku out here in the ice cave on Ragnarok, and I did take Translucent with me in order to defeat this origin Kairuku up here, as I'm pretty sure that Translucent actually dealt more damage than our Spirit Wyvern, plus it was in a cave. So we couldn't exactly fly in here with our Spirit Wyvern. Now, once defeating uh, the origin Kairuku, I decided to hop off Translucent in order to loot the corpse. Unbeknownst to me, however, there was an origin Dire Bear right behind me, which one shot me. Now, for some reason, the Spirit Dinos don't really use their AI-powered special attacks, so Translucent ended up dying to the Origin Die Bear. I did manage to get my buddy back as well as Translucent's things, and then I nuked the Origin Die Bear with Hellscream, my Demon Dragon. Day 78 meant it was time to take on the Chaos Guardian, the counterpart of the Spirit Guardian, who in my opinion is slightly easier than the Spirit Guardian due to it not being able to fire the balls like the Spirits do. So I once again trapped him and unloaded everything all over him with my spirit wife and when I got one shot by him, which was absolutely freaking fantastic. That went well, we're on a roll today, bloody hell. So I pulled out Hellscream and ended up finishing off the Chaos Guardian with Hellscream. It only cost me my spirit wife and my sanity, but we did it. <laughs> oh, let's go. Now that I had defeated the Chaos Guardian, I could tame up Chaos Creatures. Now, they exude this aura that pretty much nukes things around them, which is why my fabled Pteranodon died in the process of getting this guy shot with one of the Origin Arrows. Thankfully, I had Hellscream on hand ready to go, and I managed to knock out the Chaos Wyvern after a little bit of time. Boom, baby, let's go. Okay, let's just get Hellscream cried up. I don't wanna lose Hellscream. Hellscream has been clutched this entire series. It was then time to test its abilities. Now, it had similar attacks to Spirit Tames. However, instead of expanding orbs that launched around the area, it was kind of just like Chaos Globules that like set a f area on fire. It was a lot smaller than the Spirit Creatures attacks. However, it was still useful. Not as powerful though. Day 80 came around and I celebrated it by taming a 145 Spirit Griffin. Now, this guy was going to be just as good as any other spirit dino, but I also tamed up a spirit wyvern just in case I needed an extra one. These guys were also going to be super powerful. So I tested out the spirit griffin on an origin die bear out here in the snow area, and we were doing decent damage with the griffin. The griffin's orbs kind of came out of its butt, but it was actually its mouth where they came out of. So I feel like you had more control over the spirit griffin. Now that I had a couple of spirit and chaos creatures to my name, I got them imprinted to me by using the S plus mutator. This enabled them to get extra health and damage. And then it was time to go ahead and kill a bunch of origin dinos for the next tier of bosses. So I also killed a demonic reaper empress as well. And this allowed me to craft the Nova, the destroyer boss summoner. And then it was time to fight Nova, the destroyer, a tier five boss. Now this guy dealt a shit ton of damage if you came into contact with him. Hence why I brought the Griffin for as I felt like I had the most amount of control over this guy. And it was a pretty easy fight. There were a couple of times where I did take some damage from his attacks, about 2 million from one damage. Thankfully my Griffin did have the health to tank it and I had potions, but I pretty much stayed up in the air dropping bombs on it the entire time. Woo! All right. Oh, Nova the Destroyer has been eliminated. My golly gosh, that would have been such an easy fight for Nova if, I, if it stopped moving. Honestly, there was no way I was going to be able to kill Nova if it just stopped moving. Oh, I'm so glad that's done. What did we get? Demonic Dissension item. We've got Destroyer Soul as well. What are these? Destroyer Nuke? That seems very crazy. Uh, that was, that was, that was something. That was an intense, that was an intense process. And we got an egg. Wonderful. 
Uh, use the multi-tool wheel to descend and let's descend our hell scream into something even more terrifying. Let's do it. I'm hoping she comes out stronger. Oh, shit. I don't know if she came out stronger, but she looks cooler nonetheless. 321, 52, 50. I feel like she came out stronger. Ah, oh, damn. Only one. I'll take it. Did that say 1 million damage? Did we just hit for 1 million damage? Now that I had defeated Nova, it was then time to pretty much refarm all of the items I'd used to summon it so that I could summon in Picon the Creator. Now, this was the other tier 5 summon, and in order to summon it, I needed a bunch of artifacts, a bunch of Origins tribute items as well. So I headed out, defeated a bunch of artifactos, I defeated a bunch of Origin creatures, and then I went back to base and made a bunch of Origin summoners with the artifacts that I had gotten. I was going to need a bunch as well because I would need to defeat the Picon and Nova four more times in order to get the necessary items in order to defeat the final boss, or at least get a chance of facing the final boss. So you can see me here summoning in a bunch of the origin creatures. I did defeat all of these guys. It just didn't really take me long at all with the spirit tames. Like, look at this. They just got all got absolutely nuked. So it was just a matter of farming all those guys for the tributes. Now for extra artifacts, I also use this strategy. The Redwoods near my base, just north of the Highlands, actually had the artifact of the Brute here. So I teamed up an Eldor Otter and actually packed it to the brim full of artifacts every time I flew past the area. And because it was on a server, not single player, they respawned pretty quickly. So I was able to pretty much get a bunch of artifacts in my Otter, get them back to base and use those as the artifacts that I needed for everything. I also found a Spirit Manticore and a Spirit Broodmother, but I did not have enough kibble. I didn't think I'd be able to make enough kibble to tame the Manticore, so I settled on the level 100 Broodmother instead. Got my Origin Arrow, chucked it into her, got the hell out of there before she had a chance to retaliate, and I chucked some of the Spirit Boss kibble into the Broodmother. This would be our strongest dino that we could get. It was then time to take Webs out for a test run. Now, she actually didn't really hit all that hard in comparison to some of my other spirit dinos, which was kind of sad. She did have a butt ton of health though, so that kind of made up for it. Now, I needed a bunch more Celestial Indominus Emperor Summoners, all the little spawn tokens that they give us when they die so that I could fight the higher tier of bosses. So I used webs to try and face them. Now I did spawn in multiple of them at the same time and thankfully she was able to defeat them with her high health pool and her high damage. So I had managed to also kill the demonic Reaper Empress with her as well. It was then time to face pick on the creator. Now this alongside the guardians has to have been the most annoying boss to fight. The guardians were just like hard Pick on the creator is just genuinely a nuisance. Like, it is so annoying. I tried using the spirit broodmother. I tried using nuke, our spirit griffin. I just could not connect any sort of damage with pick on the creator. So I switched over to my chaos wyvern and I found the secret source. This was how I was going to defeat pick on the creator. By getting stuck inside of her and nailing her with my magma balls of death and destruction. As you can see here, she started taking a bunch of damage but so did I. So I had to constantly monitor my health as well as my Chaos Wyvern's health to ensure that we weren't going to die to pick on the creator. Eventually though, after a hell of a slog, I did finally manage to defeat her. You can see here, even now, it just took so much damage. She had so much health, 1.1 billion health, highest health boss we had faced so far, but it was only gonna get worse from here. Thankfully, I was able to defeat her. Pick on the creator has been defeated. Took us bloody long enough. 1.1 billion health. I'm pretty sure that's the amount of health the final boss has. So that's kind of crazy. I also found her egg that she drops. After defeating Picon, I now had everything I needed to fight my first Colossus. Now I started with the Fire Colossus and I started using my Spirit Wyvern as I believe it was my hardest hitting Spirit Tame and I figured this would be the best way to dodge its attacks as I had the ability to fly. Little did I know that the Fire Colossus also has an extra ability that I wasn't aware of where it roars and it is able to stop you from flying. And that's exactly what happened to me while I was flying over some water. 
Thankfully, I was able to get out of that situation. However, my situation didn't improve. I got caught once again from the roar while flying over the water. So instead of getting dismounted myself, I cryoed up my spirit wyvern, fell into the water, and ended up getting stomped on by the fire colossus. Now I did leave all my other important teams back at the base in one of my teams so that I could grab webs and come back out here to face the fire colossus. However, I got absolutely nuked by a fire attack, lagged out, couldn't pop a health potion, lost webs and my life once again. This was not the fight that I wanted. So I took Nuke out this time, and once again, Nuke got hit with the roar that stuns you, prevents you from flying. I got one shot by an Archaeopteryx minion, and I took Hellscream out there. Thankfully, Nuke was still alive. I don't know how. I whistled passive. I managed to get Nuke to eventually be able to follow me. She was still going at it. Look, she was still dropping her spirit bombs trying to defeat this bloody bastard. Thankfully, I was able to whistle her and get her attention and I could take her back to the beach where I was able to remount her and continue the fight against the Fire Colossus. But I got hit once again by the Fire Colossus' uh, roar and this time I was unable to save Nuke in the process. But I did bring out my Chaos Wyvern and managed to kill the Fire Colossus. I was just disheartened because I had lost Nuke and Webs. It was then time to farm the Celestial Indominus Rex Empress and the Demonic Reaper Empress in order to get their summoners so that I could fight the other Colossuses. Thankfully, they were all able to fall pretty easily to my tames, and I didn't lose any tames in the process either. It was then time to face the pick on the Creator. Now, I built a trap for it. It didn't work, obviously, the first time around, as you can see, but that didn't stop me from beating its ass. So, enjoy this little uh, relaxing tune of me killing Pick on the Creators. I then also had to repeat this process with Nova the Destroyer. I then faced my second Colossus, and if I had learned anything from fighting the Fire Colossus, it was that I needed to stay high and avoid all of its attacks, while raining spirit bombs from above. So that is exactly what I did against the Caustic Colossus. Killing it in the process with all my spirit orb power, I was able to finally defeat the second Colossus. Let's go! Another Colossus defeated. Oh, go down, big fella. Holy freaking Luya. These guys just take so long to kill. Here we go, another Colossus is about to get defeated. Let's go. The electric one is finally dead. Oh man, these guys are just such a slog. Come on, so close. Let's get this bastard. 21 million HP. I'm just going to do a couple of laps here. Come on. Come on. Oh, let's go. Bite him. Let's go. After defeating the Colossuses, I spent some time raising my pick on and over the Destroyer eggs. And then it was day 100 and it was time to face Picon's revenge. I had brought all my tames with me in order to feed him. I had set up a little outpost with some extra tames and a bed and sleeping bag so that I could respawn in the case of whether or not he would kill me. And then it was time to fight him. Now we get the hell out of here. Wait, they're all my tames. What the hell? Okay. Ooh. What the? What the hell just happened? Guys, get in there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Bro, what just happened? I would genuinely love it if my other modus decided to join in on this fight. Oh god. 
Oh god, get out of me. I can't move. Now I'm not too sure why my other teams weren't attacking for. It was really annoying. I don't know if it's because they were stunned. He doesn't do any stun attacks though as far as I'm aware. But I did manage to do quite a bit of damage to him before I lost pretty much all my games. He did manage to kill me off here. And unfortunately this pick on that I was riding on was my last team that was alive. And unfortunately he did kill me. A level 190 pick on's revenge. And with that this 100 days was complete. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below for more than 100 day content. And once again, thank you very much to Raid for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to use my code and QR code if you guys fancy playing Raid. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.